Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. Today, I'm bringing you the spinning newspaper effect in Pinnacle Studio 16 Ultimate. It can also be done in Avid Studio. Let's get into it. Alright, I got a request a while back telling me to, you know, if I can make a spinning newspaper effect and... I'm going to go ahead and knock that out for that individual and for everybody else who wants to know how to do this. Now, first and foremost, I want to show you some sites you can go to and get some uh, free uh, spinning newspapers. The first one is Declic Video Effects. This is a great one because it actually has uh, done all the work for you except for the text and the pictures. So I will have the link to uh, this website in the description of the video. If you scroll down the page, you'll find a section where it has like a whole bunch of, you know, different transitions that you can use. You can actually download them all. They're all free. But if you go to the search area and type in news and hit enter or hit go, then it will bring up three transitions. It's uh, news three, news two, and the original news. Now, all of these are good to go. They're made for Avid Studio and they're also made for Pinnacle Studio. Um, I had a little bit of trouble downloading these myself. Uh, I went to, you know, ask for help to for a deck like video, but I think I asked on the wrong page. So uh, they didn't help me. They sent me back some other thing telling me to go to another page. I think it would have been a lot easier to just help me instead of sending me to a new page. But whatever. Um, you know, they have their protocols that they got to follow. So, you know, I didn't follow it. Didn't get the help I needed. It's OK. Um, I went ahead and decided to make some custom newspapers on my own all right so i kept searching and kept looking for some uh ways to get this done now the first site i found was scrapper's guide now they offer a free download of a psd file of a newspaper template so you're going to need a video editing application that handles psd files like adobe photoshop uh Adobe Photoshop Elements, uh, and there's other programs out there that do as well. You can download the template here. And if you don't have the fonts, they let you download the fonts here as well. Pretty cool. You know, big up to the Scrappers guy for allowing me give you one to use this free newspaper template. All right. Second place, we got G Templates. G Templates, big ups to them also. They also are providing a lot of free PSD templates that you can use. And this one is a newspaper get a little look at how it you know the newspaper template here and the link to the description for this and scrappers guide will also be in the description of the video and you got your download link here so you're good to go and it'll even give you some other website uh template websites for other newspapers if you want to look at some different ones so i used this one actually for the tutorial but i'm going to give you a little look at uh, both of the psd templates so this one is the one from G templates. And as you can see, it's a PSD. I have it open right now in Adobe Photoshop CS6. You see, you got different layers here. So what these layers mean and folders with different layers in them as well. If I were to click on this eyeball, then guess what? All the pictures, because this is the pictures folder will go away. If I want particular pictures to go away, I could just click on the drop down arrow for the pictures folder and then I can pick which ones I want to remove or keep. That's pretty cool because guess what? You get to drag your own pictures into it. So let's talk about how to do that. So I have dual monitors and I have this other folder open with all these other pictures on it. So I'm going to leave it off the screen, but you can left click on any one of the photos and just do a Left click, hold the mouse button down, drag it into Photoshop. And once you see this little plus sign, you know that it's going to take. So I let go of the left mouse and now I have the picture. So I'm going to bring this down to size. I'm going to bring this photo over here. Now it's sized up like I wanted. I'm gonna click on the check mark. And we in there, got our photo. But it's color and this newspaper's black and white. I want to keep the aesthetic of the newspaper. So in the adjustments area, I'm gonna click on this little drop down arrow here. 
I'm gonna click on black and white. It's telling me it's making a new layer over this picture. I'm just gonna click on OK. I'm not gonna change any of the settings here. And now it's black and white. Now the great thing about this is I can also use the sliders to change uh, to customize how I want it to look. And it also has some presets up here. So if I click on this little drop down arrow to presets, I can add different filters. I can make it darker. I can make it lighter. All kind of good stuff I could do. Maximum black. You know, all kind of great stuff. I'm going to leave it on darker. I'm good to go. So I'm going to click on this little arrow to close this out. Now, of course, we can also change the text anywhere in this document. As you can see, it has different areas. You got the banner. I can make that go away and come back. And then I have folders for the banner. So I can do each one of the things. I can change up the logo. I can change up the word. I can do whatever I want to. Now, if I click on the text tool here, and then I bring my cursor over until the little arrow at the top left disappears, that means that I can now edit this text. So I'm going to left click, drag it across the text, and I can type in anything that I want as text. I can just click check mark and now my text is changed. You could do that with everything on here. If you want to change this little logo to your own logo, you just got to find it. It's in the banner area. Here it is, logo. And so I can go ahead and take that logo away or the words logo. I could take away the shape and the logo because they're linked together. I bring it back, put my own logo there, whatever I want. Cool template to use from G templates. This is the one I use for the video tutorial. Now, let me click back on the selection tool and I'm going to click on the other template from the scrapper's guide. So this one, it works exactly the freaking same. As you can see, you got all of your layers here. You can take layers away. You can bring them back. You can do your text. So make sure you get it where that little arrow disappears. And now I can change the text here. You know, whatever I want. Cool stuff. Like I said before, big ups to G Templates and Scrapper's Guide for these free templates. Freaking love you guys. Well, last thing we got to do is we got to save it. So if we make all our changes to the newspaper, you can see that it already has a transparent background around this one. And the one from G templates does not. So you want you just want to be safe and save both of these as PNG images. So you go to file. You want to go to save as. And you want to change the format from a PSD to a PNG image. And you want to name it whatever you want to name it. Da 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 da. da. And then click save in the location where you want it, and you are good to go. You now have a saved PNG image of a newspaper that you can use in Pinnacle Studio 16 in Avid Studio. So let's jump in there and get to using them. So I'm gonna open up Pinnacle Studio. Now, looking at this, first thing I see is that, or first thing you see anyway, is I got my two video clips down in the timeline track here, and I have, uh, an area here between the two of them where I want the transition to take place. So I'm not worrying about a fade or anything. I just want to jump from one to the other because I'm going to use my newspaper as a transition. If I go to the newspaper, I'm going to left click on it, drag it down into the timeline. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to bring the picture out as far as you want it to be. All right. You want to do that before you do anything else because we're going to be using keyframes and you don't want to change the position of your keyframes by changing the length of the clip afterwards. All right, so do the length of your clip first. Get an idea of where you want it to start spinning in and where you want it to start spinning out. If you're going to leave it on the screen, you can do it however you want to. It doesn't matter. All right, so now that I have the newspaper here, I'm going to right-click on it. And I'm going to go to Open Effects Editor. I'm going to go to camera and then I'm going to go to rotate. All 
All right, so I'm going to change this from default to no preset. And now we see that the newspaper is at its full size. I want to move my scrubber or my playhead all the way back to the beginning of the file. So now we want to go ahead and we want to activate our keyframes. So what this does is it makes a keyframe here at the beginning and a keyframe at the end of the individual newspaper at this size. So a few things we need to start off with. I want to make my rotation go all the way around to the right when it plays. So I'm going to go to negative 720. And what you'll see is as I move this forward, once I get it set up, it's going to actually move to the right. You see this way it makes it move to the left. By going to negative 720 at the beginning, it's going to spin to the right. Next thing I want to do is I want to put a keyframe here. But before I do that, I want to make this size zero at the beginning. Horizontal and vertical, we want zero. Then we want to go to our next position. And I'm going to add a keyframe here by changing the parameters. And I'm going to change the horizontal to 75. And I'm going to change the vertical to 75. And then I'm going to change my rotation all the way up to a positive 720. This is going to make it spin like a mother. Watch this. Spin, 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 spin out, spin in. Spin the wind. All right. You know what? We got our spin wrong. So that means I got to change these. Got to move this to 720. Got to go back to this keyframe by clicking on next keyframe. Change this one to negative 720. All right. I like that. Good to go. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to create another keyframe to make the paper stay exactly as it is right now. So I'm going to right click on this keyframe. I'm going to do copy keyframe. I'm going to click on the next position where I want and I'm going to paste the keyframe here by right clicking and doing paste keyframe. What that does is it keeps it from spinning anymore. Stops it from moving. It's going to stay in the exact same place the whole time. So now I'm at the end. So at my last position, I want it to spin back out. So I'm going to change the rotation back to 720 so it spins back out. And I'm going to change the horizontal to zero and the vertical to zero. So what that does is it makes it spin back to the left and back off the screen. So now we have a spin onto the screen and we have two keyframes that make it stay in place. And then we got to spin it off the screen and I'm going to click. Okay. You know why? Cause it's a freaking wrap. We're done. All right. Booyah. How to make the spinning newspaper effect in pinnacle studio 16. All right, people, you know, the routine, the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Comments. You know I love comments. I love comments so much, I almost married them. But my wife, you know, I love her a little bit more than comments. So I went ahead and married her instead. But if you leave me your comments, I will get back to you. If you need help, I'll try to point you in the right direction and get you the help you need. And last, but definitely not least. Don't you ever forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.